Welcome, Christiane. I'm so happy to have you here as my guest and not in media. A warm welcome to you. Oh, thank you, Luciana. I'm so happy to be with you. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So let me start by sharing uh, how I came across you because it was mm -hmm. very interesting. I, uh, some of my friends maybe in, on Facebook was, I don't know, maybe commenting something. I don't quite remember. Mm -hmm. But um, I started listening to this podcast. This is, I, I can't remember the name of the, the, the channel. Never mind. And you were talking and talking and talking. I was listening and listening and something uh, pulled my attention when you start speaking about the forum. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, which is this forum? And then I, I remember I messaged you. Is it is right. this Liberation Unleashed? And you say, yeah, that's right. Liberation Unleashed. So <laughs> because the forum was the turning point also here. Uh, and I would like to, to start from, from, from this. Maybe, maybe I, I should ask you, how did you, I don't know, how did you come across Liberation and Legion? What's the story? Maybe a little bit about the story of Christiane before oh, yes, this, sure. <laughs> if you don't so, mind. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So before I came across Liberation Unleashed, I'd been a spiritual seeker for 40 years. Wow. With 40. Like 25, 26 years, I had decided that I wanted to know who I am. And um, I just thought, well, what can you do? Probably meditate. And so I started meditating with Zen for a long time. I stayed with Zen a really long time. And also um, with the very old Buddhist tradition, Theravada, where they still have the probably pretty correct um, speeches of the Buddha collected. That's what the scientists say. I can't ever say this. This is not my expertise, whether this is correct or not. And, um, and I really had tried to get into it and I had deep insights over time here and there, but they all vanished. And then one day I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I just freaked out. I was so in panic, so totally in panic. And what was the worst was that all this great spiritual training didn't help me a bit, not a bit. I mean, yes, I can say this is not my body, but hey, <laughs> it's still felt like my body might be dying. I might be dying. I'm in pain. I wasn't really in pain. That's exaggerated. But I'm afraid. I'm in panic. My thoughts are racing and I can't control them. Now, the Buddha always says, if you can't control it, it's not yours. It can't be yours. Otherwise, you should be able to control it. But yeah, that sounds all nice and good when you hear it and you can start to believe it. But it doesn't really mean that it's really seen in its very core what that means. Mm. And in the end, beliefs just don't carry you through anything. And so I just, it just didn't help that I knew all this stuff, what I had gathered during my 40 years. And uh, I thought, this has to stop. This has to stop. Now I have to find. I had a very exotic search in India, uh, meditating to the cries of the monkeys. And it was all very nice. And I really, I don't regret it because it was so exciting. And it's like, yeah, it was exotic. And that had a whole point for itself. You know, sitting with a Japanese Zen master, 80 years old, who was so agile and so on his toes with everything it was amazing but um yeah it was nice but it didn't help and still in my hospital bed i felt that i kind of turned my back to this exotic search and the exotic identity of being a searcher a spiritual seeker right <laughs> uh, it's a nice name isn't it nice profession lifelong <laughs> 
Yeah. There's a job you hardly ever you lose. <laughs> 24-7. Right. And I thought, I have to find now. But I had no idea how. Um, I had exhausted my means. I thought that I knew about everything that was out there in all kinds of directions where they looked into awakening, enlightenment, however they call it. And I didn't know where to look. So uh, what can you do? Nothing. So I just <laughs> kept uh, my feet on the ground with looking into which treatment I wanted and studying the studies about the treatments and finding out that some treatments like anti-hormonal treatment, in my case, it's not for everyone, but in my case, was like 8% chance of not getting a relapse. I would take 92% for nothing. I thought, oh no, but that's that's a bad idea, really, because it can give you cancer. And uh, so uh, I didn't do that, and I had trouble with the doctors, and it was really awful. And then one day, but I was at that time also translating a book, Life on Purpose. Wow. Yes, uh, it's, it's a really amazing book. If anybody wants to find their purpose, please do so before you find uh, that there is no I, because then the purpose doesn't make any sense any longer. But if you want to find it before <laughs> that, this book, Life on Purpose, is really good because it helps you find the inherited purpose, which we get from society, parents, and so on. And, and then you create your spiritually inspired purpose. Um, purpose is not like an Easter egg. You don't search for it and find it somewhere. Nobody has hidden it anywhere. Um, you, it's really something that is created from the most lively, most deep, maybe spiritually inclined moments in the life ever. And it's very interesting that my purpose still is true to the day. And that's basically the request. This purpose has to stay true no matter what happens. And it's I can tell you, it's... Um, a life on purpose rises from the living connection to the ineffable. It rests in the now and is filled with joy, love, and ease. Mm -hmm. Now, then I only had had moments of that. That's where I drew that description from. Um, but now, yeah, that's really how it is. <laughs> it's, it's no longer a living connection to the ineffable. It's more living it. Something yeah. like that. It's hard to say. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I sat there in my hospital bed and uh, thought, what, what, what to do? And so there was another translator of this book, an Italian one, and we had met already in Berlin. And so we were Facebook friends, and she had liked a post which sounded, um, the body is not ready for awakening. And I thought, that sounds interesting. Let's have a look at this one. It was, maybe you know her, the awakened dreamer, Laurie and Lothian. She has gone through LU herself a long, long oh. time ago. She is small on the kind of psychic side. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I read this article. And in the article, she mentioned Liberation Unleashed. And that's how I came across Liberation Unleashed. Mm -hmm. And so I went on this forum and I read the dialogues and the archive and it was very amazing that I thought, wow, something is really happening here because I could follow the dialogues to the point of the shift when something was seen and then I couldn't understand it any longer. <laughs> and it really, as I always say, had the beauty of a Zen poem. I just couldn't follow. It was very beautiful to read, but I had no idea what they were talking about. And so I thought, okay, something is definitely happening here. And then I thought, well, uh, first I'm going to research the background of the founders. And I did that and read their websites and uh, looked at the Rick Archer interview. And, you know, kind of, um, I had done... Uh, I also had to become part of a sect during my journey for a short time, and I didn't want that to happen again. And so yeah. I just looked around, and yeah, it sounded all good. And then uh, on Ilona's side, there were all these questions, um, you know, 
what the expectations are and about fear. And I thought, yeah, that's a really good question. Do I really want this to happen? Now that it seems to be in my grasp. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, oh, really? <laughs> the most amazing what? question ever, yeah. Yeah, what if, what if this really happens? I don't, I see that I don't have an eye on me and then what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, can I still drive a car? Mm. What about my partner? Um, can I still work? I still worked as a locum physician at that time. So I needed to keep my thoughts together for some time and to be able to do that. And I thought, Oof, um, yes, um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, um, but then I thought about it and during my spiritual search, I had traveled a lot and lived in other countries with teachers. And uh, when I came back, I always had to start afresh, basically. And I was very skilled at that. And I thought, you started your life, I think, four times over. You can do it another time. And you've always fallen on your feet, even after the sex business, which was really bad. Mm. So I thought, okay. Yeah, I'll do it. And now my radiation was coming up and I didn't know, oh, will I be able, I don't know how I'm going to take it. Will I be able to answer every day, which is yeah. a requirement on the forum. And I think it's very important. And it's so I thought, nah, maybe not. And so I'll just uh, bought the book on Amazon, uh, The Gateless Gate Crushers. Hmm. Wow. And uh, we are we have this book now translated in Bulgarian, you know, for the first oh, time. Oh, you do? Yeah. Wow, mm. beautiful. Yeah. That's great. It's a great <laughs> sorry, resource. Sorry, I just wanted to do Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great resource. Mm. So um, I had it on my Kindle and I took it everywhere with me. I, I was hanging out in waiting rooms with doctors a lot during this time. And, but I never minded. It was so exciting to read these questions. And I thought, wow. I never ask myself these great questions. They're beautiful. It was so, so beautiful to look into that. I thoroughly enjoyed really every minute of it. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to enjoy it because like after four or so days, I think four days, on a Sunday after lunch, I sat on my yellow mustard yellow couch and looked into the next question. And I had already kind of boiled it down to that the eye is more rather like a virus that attaches it, itself to everything. Seeing mm -hmm. turns into I see and walking into I walk and whatever. And so I thought, uh, okay, let's look at a few more questions and then have a walk. And it was August and uh, beautiful weather outside. So I looked into the next question. The next question was, so is there any you in any physical form or shape? And I thought, what a silly question, of course not. And while I was thinking that sentence, a really deep shift happened. I still think I was moved to the side a bit. Mm. Uh, I can't really confirm it, I have no reference, but it felt like I was moved to the side. Everything turned dead silent, totally silent. Mm. And I saw clearly that there is no me and also what I had done wrong. So I didn't see it because I mean, it was right there. It wasn't really hard to yeah. see. And then, uh, yeah, I did a fist bump and I, yeah, got it. <laughs> and then I started to feel stupid, really, really stupid. Mm -hmm. I thought, I <laughs> Dumb, do you have to be to not see this for 40 years on end <laughs> looking for it? How can well, this be? It was also funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, but this feeling of stupidity really stayed with me. <laughs> this was really dumb. <laughs> so, yeah, this was how the self illusion fell away. Hmm. And then I went outside and it was really a psychedelic experience. Mm. Like I walked out and it was Sunday in Hamburg. Hamburg is a two million town. So there were lots of people outside in the park just next to where we lived. And, uh, 
and to me it was just clear there were all just forms and shapes moving and I thought oh, how am I ever going to relate to these folks again and I thought oh, I will think about that another time <laughs> because I just couldn't think about it and so I just enjoyed the sights the sounds the the incredible intensity of everything and mm. the colors were so vibrant and beautiful and it was like super 3d everything and mm. very plastic and so yeah oh. and i had a long walk with nice ice cream and uh, when i came home after two hours i said to my partner who was in bed with a broken leg unfortunately at that time um I don't exist. <laughs> really? And she said, sure you do, I can see you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I thought, oh, oh. I realized at that moment I have nobody to share this experience with. Nobody. Yeah. I didn't know anybody who would answer in a different way. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought, oh, I think I'm going to get on the forum rather soon, just to be confirmed, because this is, I need to talk, to be able to talk to people who understand this, yeah. because it's such a different reality all of a yeah, sudden. And, and it feels a, kind of a, a aloneness. Yeah. yeah. It yes. feels so alone. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so I went on the forum. It was a little bit difficult to get confirmed because I didn't have the LU lingo at mm. all I wasn't guided hadn't been guided and so I just talked how I felt poetically so you, or whatever you haven't been guided you were reading the book right right I was just reading the book 20 pages <laughs> yeah after 40 years <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe people just buy half the book it might be enough <laughs> oh. and uh and so um, after some days, I went on LU and Alex guided me. He is no longer on LU, mm. and, uh, but he wrote beautiful um, science fiction about the self <laughs> and, uh, you know, about programming robots so they become humans and you have to implement the sense of self into them and how that works are really great. And uh, yeah. And then I guided, I was pretty active. I had the gate group and I learned a lot from Ilona, really a lot. She's a great guide, a great, great guide. Yeah. Agreed. And uh, so, and yeah. And then after a short time, I had a visit with a doctor, a gynecologist, I needed somebody for aftercare in Germany, gynecologist do this kind of stuff for breast cancer. Mm. But they couldn't accept my decision not to take hormones. Mm. And they were really b emotionally blackmailing me. It was horrible. Mm. And I, one night I was just crying and, and I thought, this has to stop. This reactivity has to stop. Um, I have to go on somehow. This is not everything, seeing that there is no me. And now I knew from the Buddhist teachings I had studied um, that there is indeed a model about which other layers, uh, like it's an onion, the outer layer is the self-illusion, and then there are more layers but until the whole onion is unpeeled. And the main is, is belief in a separate entity. Yeah, and when it for when. This was, of course, my opinion, but when this belief has dropped, it's usually it's easier to, to work with others, so to speak. Yes. When once the self is seen for what it is, just a pure fiction, it's easier. Yes. It's easier. Actually, um, if you have not seen that it's, there is no self, there is no possibility to go useless. on. useless. Absolutely agree. It's absolutely okay. impossible. Mm. You know, sometimes people come and they have an intellectual understanding, but it wasn't fully seen through. And then they chant, just don't get a grip in the, in the next inquiry. True. The self is such, uh, uh, the self as the me, as the agent, is such a thick illusion. It's unbelievable. Mm. 
Mm. And I don't guide in it any longer. I send all people to all you for that step because it's now five years that I don't experience any me whatsoever, not even the sense of being. Mm. And it happened once that I accepted somebody for guidance and they described how the self felt, right? When mm -hmm. the body and what belonged to it. And I read it and I thought, uh-oh, I think I picked somebody up who's hallucinating. Yeah. Hmm. What do I do? And so I just let it rest overnight and thought, well, I'll think about it tomorrow. I don't know what to do. Mm. And the next morning I read it again. And then this very faint memories came. I thought, actually, I think I might have thought the same, but I'm not totally sure. I just couldn't relate to it any longer. And then the questions lose the bite. Hmm. They are not pressing enough. And people take very long if they see it all through the self-illusion. And so um, I stopped guiding in that step. Hmm. And I thought, now, nah, uh, you have just the right people. Usually people who just saw through it, they're really on their toes with it still, and they still have the edge to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful, Christiane. Mm. Yeah. So what, can I ask what changes and what stays the same? Pardon me? What changes and what stays the same? Uh, with what? Let's say with life <laughs> or relationship. Um, no, I or... mean, um, do you mean with seeing through the self-illusion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically, um, yeah, life stayed the same. Of course, there has <laughs> never been in me. <laughs> so, in, unfortunately, uh, except for the short psychedelic experience, nothing major happened. What happened was my memory became so bad nearly instantaneously. <laughs> sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm laughing, but yeah. Um, it was unbelievable. I used to have a memory like a sticky tape. Everything that flew against it just stuck. I didn't have to put any effort into it. And all of a sudden, I was gone. It was gone, just was forgetting everything and still do. My phone is my most precious companion with reminding me with its alarm function of everything. And I also have a paper calendar as a backup <laughs> in case I lose my phone and I'm totally lost. And uh, so it's, um, yes, that was pretty bad. Mm. And translating, that was quite an ordeal then. I still had half the book to translate. So it was very interesting though, because I could still do it. It was very, very relaxed form of working. Mm. It was like, really, it was happening. And I, and the, still, the words, the German words still came to me. And the ones who didn't, which didn't come to me, I just didn't know them. I had to look them up. Mm. And so it's like, um, it still worked, but it was very different. It needs to get used to it, I think. It's a little... It's a kind of more laid back life where there is no so much doing, 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 but more mm. relaxing into it's basically doing the non doing, as then it says it. Yeah. 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 Mm. And otherwise, my relationship, well, my partner said, You're a much nicer person now, but that's not who I married. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, then what else? Yeah, I just worked as normal and usually that was no problem actually. Mm -hmm. And and this impulse to guide? Uh, oh, that came immediately. Yeah, immediately. Mm. Immediately when I saw through the self illusion, in that moment, the impulse was there because I was sitting in the circle of devoted Buddhist seekers between 70 and 80 years old, many of them having sought for 
50 years. Often they started right after the Second World War. That was their incentive. Wow. Yeah, to find something that brings peace to the world. And like they talked about, the th three of them, the main persons had met in a, um, how do you call these prisoners? In, in, the, in a prisoner of war camp, in an mm. English prisoner of war camp. Three of them had met. And uh, so, and they were just desperate, saying, no, stream entry. Mm. I don't think I'm going to make it. Yeah. And they were right. They were right. They were assessing the situation properly. And I thought, wow, this is so simple. We were just totally on the wrong track, trying to intellectually get it. Yeah. And uh, I have to... Like it's always in front of your nose, basically. Right. You just have to, to look. Screaming yeah. everywhere. You look yes. screaming loud. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's really... It's one of the weirdest things. It's one of the weirdest things to see. It's like um, you're running past your keys three times or five times, which are on the table and open, but you're running past them because you're looking everywhere, <laughs> just not where the keys are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So you, you felt this compassion towards... Oh, yes, oh, my heart help. just reached out to them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, this is so simple. I have to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how to help others see this. Because I was clear that seeing it for myself wouldn't teach me how to help others. Mm -hmm. There was no method in what I had done. I had just looked into a few questions. And uh, they were rather random questions because they were also random dialogues, which I used. So, yeah. And uh, which made it hard to guide, actually. In the beginning, I confused my clients more than anything else. And I had a very relaxed mentor who just let me do. And in the end, I kind of forced her to read everything I posted before I posted it. Because I thought, this is not going to lead anywhere if I continue like this. <laughs> oh. And then I went into one uh, of Ilona's sandbox groups. Mm. And that really helped me. Yeah. So now basically you are helping people like this. Right. This yeah. is what I do now. Oh, lovely. Can I'm you... now fully retired and every morning I sit down and guide. Wow. Can you share a little bit more about this? I would like to... I don't know, to say something to those who are still seeking because there are, there are people, uh, you know, you know this. Or yes. So I think what, what is really what important... What would you say to those? Pardon me? What would you say to those people? I would say... Um, obviously, if you're still seeking, what you've done up to now doesn't work. So just stop it for now. It's, it didn't work. If you're not sure, try a little longer. But if you're sure it doesn't work or you don't know anybody in this movement, whatever it is, who isn't clearly awakened on the path the teacher te teaches, then just maybe assume that's a kind of statistic mm. and, and just look for something else. Um, by the way, there is very interesting research about um, whether you should stick to something that doesn't work or you should change it. Dr. Jeffrey Martin has done a lot of research and it's actually better than to change it. And to change the method from like, I don't know, from Tibetan Buddhism to Theravada Buddhism or from Zen, I went from Zen to Theravada or from uh, try non-duality, whatever, just try and see whether anything resonates. That's the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe you find awakening that way. Some people do. It's possible. It's rare, but it's possible. If you didn't, I think this way of simply looking directly um, is the best way. The Buddha said this very interesting and the shortest lecture on awakening, which you can summarize in a few sentences. It's like when in the scene, there is simply the scene, 
then there is no you. And when there is no you, there is no you here, yonder, or between this. Just this is the end of suffering. And end of suffering is synonymous with awakening. Now, seeing through self-illusion is not awakening. It's the first step and the crucial step to awakening. But there are still some self-layers like the, and they are not about what we are, but what we think we have. The, for example, the belief we have something like wanting and not wanting that makes us react. Mm -hmm. When that step is seen through, reactivity ceases and it's the most beautiful experience. Yeah, because then, you know, I thought, gosh, I hadn't known contentment all my life. I didn't know what contentment was you know, independent of the circumstances. Mm. And, um, and then the next step is when that is done, reality and self can be inquired into. And for example, the next step will be the subject object split. We think there is a subject in a kind of central point of perspective. It's not personal. It's more a point of perspective with all the objects around, objects, is everything that can be discerned, sound, sights, feelings, thoughts, anything. And it's like we're at the center of the stage and everything flows <laughs> together in us mm. and uh, acts around us. And um, when the and it's also separated from us through boundaries, firm boundaries. When the subject is seen through that there is no subject, all boundaries disappear. So there is no longer separation. And also the 3D vision disappears and, and changes into a 2D vision. Mm -hmm. Because only the boundaries created the sense of depth. Also the sense of a body disappears, which is very interesting. And then um, the next layer is we think we have a, a faculty called perception, which mirrors an outside world in time and space made out of substance that we then have mirrored inside with this faculty. And we look for the faculty of perception. This is a very subtle inquiry, but at, with each level, the subtleties are adjusted to. So it's not something you have to learn. You simply adjust with each level. And when it is seen that there is actually no faculty as perception, the whole sense of an outside world collapses. It's the end of the world as we know it, really. Hmm. And it's very clear that the only thing we can ever experience are experiences. And we cannot know whether this is an outside world that is mirrored, like a bee will experience differently. So will your dog or your cat. And um, we cannot stick our head out of our experience and have a look, what are we experiencing? Because this again will be our experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there is no way out. This is very fascinating. Oh. And then... Um, you land in a kind of limbo, but the sense of I exist or I am is still present. And that is the next step. And when that falls away, all sense of identity or being is gone. It's simply gone. It's actually quite shocking. I have a long thread in LU Unleashed about that where I complained at length. That wasn't what I signed up for. People should be warned. <laughs> They have no idea what they are getting themselves into. Really no identity. That is quite an adjustment. And with that, also the sense of inside and outside disappears. And uh, I always needed the inside. Uh, I grew up with a rageaholic father. And that was always my safe haven where I could withdraw into and felt kind of safe. That was suddenly gone. I freaked out. So that was... Um, traumas come up after, uh, if they have not been dealt with they come up at that point yeah. well anyway then um, a real strong restlessness sets in looking for safety or something to hold on to or reliability something firm to stand on any ground uh, and most of all so we can feel good that's the basic driving power and everything mm. yes and 
when that calms down, there is no shift. That's the only factor. There's no shift. It simply calms down. Then the view becomes clear on what actually is. Like we act as if we didn't know, but we actually know. And our thoughts kind of um, play this illusion game on us. Mm. With all these different illusions, it's amazing. And seeing what is, is really a, a joke. I, I just laughed and I thought, sure. it has never been the, always been the case. <laughs> and uh, like, you know, like the fish swimming the seven seas in search of water. It's literally like that. Yeah. <laughs> Someone mentioned somewhere that it is not a joke. It is the joke. <laughs> it is the joke, really. It is the joke. Yeah. And it's an incredible relief. It's an incredible relief because it takes so much energy to energy to keep this house of cards up. Yeah. And and it's just I in my youth I did long distance hiking with this really there was no uh, lightweight stuff. You know, the tent was out of cotton and everything. Mm -hmm. So you really had to carry a, uh, carry a heavy weight. And I felt like on the evenings when we put the backpacks down and put our tents up and then you feel like you're weightless and can just fly away. And such a heavy load drops. Mm -hmm. And the dominant experience is space. Oh yes, and something very interesting also happened. After, again, after just a few minutes, I felt completely and utterly ordinary. There were no special effects, nothing that I could have done with a few fireworks, at least now. <laughs> <laughs> at least one. <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> oh. And uh, so um, it's not that you become an extraordinary person, special, yeah. or you acquire any special Yeah, some of the secrets, gifts, expectations that it should be something extraordinary or you right. should become some, someone who can, I don't know, create some stuff. <laughs> yeah, create stuff out of thoughts, whatever. <laughs> um, no. Uh, one Zen poem says it's so beautiful. It says, um, "Neither holy nor wise, just an ordinary, just an ordinary fellow who completed his work." Beautiful, yeah, beautiful. And that's how it feels. And if anybody feels, or anybody portrays themselves like being special in some kind, just be cautious. They're not there yet. Mm -hmm. You can still learn from them, but they're not there yet. So at some point you will have probably you will have to move on, but yeah, yeah. There is some uh, I don't know how to put in words. There is some feeling that when you speak with someone, there is you know if there is you speak with a person or there is no person there. Mm -hmm. It's something like energetically. Yeah. Mm. Um. It, it isn't bad. It isn't bad. It's just that not all steps have been done yet. And if anybody engages in this kind of abuse, which seems to be rampant in spiritual communities, well, and then they haven't mastered the second step, which is also called desire and ill will. Mm. And so um, it's also not bad. They probably don't even know the step exists. But just know... They're not awakened. They may help you for some part, maybe just learning a good meditation technique. Something so you can focus, you can learn to focus. But this is a faculty you need when inquiring. If your thoughts just go all away all the time, it's very hard to focus on what you're actually experiencing. Hmm. Because this is what you need to focus on. Of course, so, not in the environment. Right. Oh, do so, you engage with some community? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. So um, if you want to awaken, you can do it. You have all the faculties you need. As long as you can have some sensory input, you don't need to have all. Some people are deaf. Some people might be blind. That's all right. But you need to have some reference to what is actually there and what isn't. Mm. Now, you will tell me, didn't you just say nothing is actually there? You just experience it? That's right. Mm. But... 
you can't see it in the beginning. It's too hard. It's mm -hmm. too subtle. So you start with seeing that the thoughts are actually not the yeah. content of thoughts, actually not real. I mean, yeah. I can dream now of travel. I want to dream to uh, travel to Corsica. Um, so and I have a mini camper outside, which I just built, but I can't drive more than 15 kilometers in a strict lockdown. And uh, our numbers are skyrocketing right now. And I just, that's how it is. Mm. My dreams are very nice. I'm still sitting at my table right now with a ring light in front of me and a lovely lady I'm talking to. Mm. <laughs> this lady is also just scribbles on a screen. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. So mm. um, as long as you have a reference for what is actually there or not, you can do this inquiry. Now, for most people, it's possible to discern what is thought of and what is actually experienced. For some, it seems to be too hard. That must be said, it's just too hard. You will find out, it doesn't harm when you do the inquiry. You will find out if it's too hard and you feel like, boy, I, I don't get what they mean. And it, you know, you do it for six months, a year or so, then maybe this is not your path. Yeah, I mean, Again, then this is not your path. not for everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You should get, get the feeling that you get a grip in the inquiry. And for I, th I think, and most people who are successful think it's great to work with the questions. They find them exciting. You need to have curiosity, real yeah. curiosity. Yeah. Now, when you mentioned, yeah, I remember that I was so excited in the beginning that I was literally... Uh, speaking to all my friends, but you should subscribe in this forum. Why, <laughs> <do you laughs> <see>? Why, <laughs> yeah. Why do you sit and listening to all these satsangs and singing mantras? Stop it! It's bullshit. <laughs> but no one cares, you know. No one cares. Right. And I just stopped. <laughs> yeah. Because what to do? Yeah. What to I do? already had a website about Buddhism. That was my retirement project. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I totally had to change the content now, right? Mm -hmm. I still have the old blog posts up, but I think now I will delete I can them. imagine. I can imagine. I would, I would like to ask you, do you engage with some communities now? Or I don't know, do you still have some favorite uh, teachers or speakers or someone who inspire you? I don't know, something. Can you share? Yes. So... Um, I like to engage with people who are very honest about their experience. Mm -hmm. And because it's actually not oral, it's, um, what is seen can be quite shocking. Mm -hmm. And I also had some experience where I thought I was going, I, I, I was actually sure I had gone mad. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, um, I'm writing a book right now and it'll be all mm -hmm. in there. It should oh. come out in fall, yes. Great. And um, I value for that Atyashanti, who wrote this great book, The End of Your World. Mm. And in there, he describes what happens. Um, even if, you know, he calls it um, non persistent awakening. Even if the awakening is not persistent, so that means it was a deep insight. It wasn't awakening. It, a real awakening itself doesn't come and go. It's mm -hmm. there or it's not there. Uh, but it doesn't come and go. Um, but like this brain fog, not being able to memorize things any longer, the changes in feelings, like the feelings become much more subtle. And after the last sense of I am dropped away, I thought, gosh, I don't have any feelings any longer. Wow. And then my guide said, calm down. That's much, much more subtle. They come back. You'll, you'll be able to adjust to that. Mm. And it's true now for me, it's just, yeah, they are no longer like this exuberant um, thought echoed stuff. Um, but uh, I still value beauty or the fresh green right now it's so beautiful or the first flowers that come out um but it's very different it's much calmer mm. in 
uh, Buddhism awakening is nibbana or nirvana in Sanskrit, and literally means an, a, a fire extinguished. They still say that in some countries, like the kitchen fire is nibbana. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a really extinguishing of this fire of liking and not liking and pushing and pulling at experience yeah. all the time. Yeah, it totally fun. goes mm. away. Yeah. And, uh, and it's much, much calmer. Mm. And this, I remember that day um, I hugged my partner and my thoughts said, oh, this is beautiful. And I thought, wait, do you need to tell me? And then I thought, this is very interesting. Let's have a look what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Why do thoughts have to tell me this is beautiful? And when I then noticed that, I noticed that really the thoughts are like, you know, the synthesizer of a band. Mm -hmm. um, giving echo and more volume to what's happening or toning it down or something. Anyway, it's highly manipulated what we experience and the thoughts are great at that. So um, yeah, all this comment is, commentary is no longer so dominant if it's there at all. Mm -hmm. And it can be pretty quiet. And the, it's just, um, how do I say, it just is. Yeah. Yeah. But um, these experiences, also there are Kundalini phenomena I experienced, like I started to shake. And I didn't know what that was. I had no idea whatsoever, no reference point. I'm a physician. I thought, uh oh, this might be the first case of late onset hunting in Korea. This is a disease, an inherited disease, which uh, hits you usually by 40. <laughs> and there you have all this random movements. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called devil's dance uh, in, among the lay population. And I thought, maybe I have that. But then I found online some resources and people to talk to and a woman, Bonnie Greenwell, who has researched into this phenomenon for th over 30 years. And she wrote her dissertation on it and everything. And she really calmed me down and said, no, no, this is just the energy moving. It helps you to integrate yeah. everything. It removes blockages. Yeah, don't it worry. It's free to move and it moves. Right. Don't worry. Just give it time. Lay down twice a day and let it move your body as it wants to. And, uh, and that really calmed it down a lot during the day. Like I had a hard time driving mm. because my arms would move, for example. Um, but yeah, there are phenomena that can be very strange. And if something like that happens to you, just reach out to people. There are always people, um, I don't know how it happens, but there will be people around who can help you. Mm. And we have the internet now, it's so easy. Or like when I thought I've gone mad, I thought, what am I going to do now? I can't go to a shrink and say... I did the stuff with awakening and now I'm mad. <laughs> I'm walking within myself like in a computer game. And uh, so I thought, what do I do? And then I remembered somebody, a Danish guide who had, he's no longer guiding either. And he had had a very rough, deep awakening. And like he couldn't speak for weeks. His wife had to feed him, oh. to wipe his tears, to lead him through the garden. She was a, a Thai woman and she had some reference. And so she lit a few more candles in the temple and she wasn't worried. Um, she, she kind of grasped that this was on the path of awakening somehow and the Buddha would manage it. And uh, so this was very, very beautiful. And I thought he experienced really something disturbing he'll be able to help me. And so I contacted him and he was, he just gave me a very, very grounding routine and I followed it to the T and it put me straight within a week. Mm. Um, and, and, and these people are around. It's amazing how many people have had this experience once you come in these kind of communities mm. uh, where they are around, you know? Mm. And these communities are important. 
and uh, yeah, it's so good that that the internet exists. Yeah, true. Do you engage with some communities now? Well, I have my own community. Mm. I'm still in contact with many LU people. I love it. And uh, I also have. I like to engage also with the non-dual community. And right now I'm in a very special project and that is uh, looking into the connection of what happens to trauma upon awakening because some of our people had a really rough time when traumas came up they didn't even know about. And um, this trauma stuff is something very special that really isn't touched by awakening it's um, the research says it's taught in a different part of the brain and um, this with the weakening of the self and then the going of the self Atishanti said that I'm quoting him here and he said it very well all defense mechanisms disappear as well they're somehow um, locked to the self basically. And if that goes, the defense mechanism goes and anything that is unfinished will come up. And I would only encourage everybody if it happens, just get help. A traditional trauma therapist will help. I have some YouTube uh, people now who have very good channels um, and can help with it, reducing traumatic flashbacks and things like that. Oh, so, um, yeah, because... Yeah. And I'm also in contact with somebody who has this as a main focus of his whole work. Hmm. And we will look into this, how trauma, and also how maybe we can kind of um, work with it in a way so that it doesn't all come up at once, hmm. which can really be a lot. I mean, by then, you're very well used to dealing with all kinds of feelings because they already come up along the way you know, when looking into desire and oh, well, all the old issues come up from the past. And um, it's a longer thing. And uh, the main thing is to learn to be with whatever is. And it's very empowering. I remember when I learned to really be with any kind of feeling, I felt so strong. I felt like, yeah, this is really great. I can just be with any feeling. No problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, don't be afraid. Uh, it's necessary and it will come up and it's not easy. It's certainly not easy. But then just reach out for help and often just somebody else sharing and saying, yeah, this is really tough. Um, it's good. Hmm. If trauma can is in the way, it can be in the way of awakening. Like in the first letter, you would feel it if you're so afraid of losing control, if you're so afraid of losing control, it might be an old trauma. Because um, when we're traumatized, we will develop our own fantasy of how we are still in control. Like with my Rachel Holick father, I would very carefully watch him all the time and learned very well to read the cues when he was on the brink mm -hmm. and just disappear, yeah. go away, get out of the way, <laughs> uh, out of Storm's way. And, um, and that gave a sense of control. It wasn't always possible, but I still had the imagination. I wasn't totally at his mercy. And that was very important to survive. A child would be crushed otherwise. Every child will develop their own fantasy of control. Yeah. And you can't take it away, just take it away by seeing some self-illusion. Uh, the protective mechanisms will be too strong. And that's good. It's a good thing. And it means if um, the self-illusion can't be seen through because of control issues, this is just too hard to digest, most likely there will be some traumatic stuff in the background. And then just deal with that first. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Oh, that was very good to hear. Yeah, yes. it quite well. Yeah, I've also came across one non-dual therapist. Mm. She mm -hmm. explaining oh, almost the same, yeah. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. 
I mean, basically, it comes down that we have such a hard time staying with our feelings. Now, for a child, these feelings were completely overwhelming. It couldn't stay with them. It had to somehow manage them and get them out of out of the system, out of the memory, out of consciousness. It, it had to disappear somehow. And uh, now this will have to be resolved. We can't have stuff still locked away. It won't work over time. The locks come off the prison. Wow. And uh, then the stuff will be there. And so just get used to being with whatever is there. Now you're an adult. Feelings do not kill, never. I haven't had um, <laughs> a fatality. Mm. And so just slowly get used to feeling these feelings, just feeling the breath alongside with it. That's how I did it for a long time. Just anchoring in the breath, gently breathing, and then just feeling the feelings alongside, basically the body sensations of the feelings. Mm. And later I just let that melt together with the name because then the feelings will be stronger. And uh, it's all right, you can do it and you will feel very empowered. And the first thing that leaves will be the fear. That's the first thing to go on this mm -hmm. kind of work. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> mm, let me see. Oh, we cover an hour, basically. I'm amazed, oh, constantly amazed how it's like, like this. <sighs> yeah, no time. Right. Yes, the time passes <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> mm. Yes. So, so there, there basically... Is a new book in, in the fall, you, see, you mentioned? In the fall, it will also be called Finding Awakening, like my webpage. Mm-hmm. The no yeah, nonsense path be to in awakening. The, in the description, mm -hmm. there will be your webpage. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I also have a Facebook page and a group, a Facebook group community. But it's very special about the fetus. The fetus are, is, fetus is the concept for the different layers of the self that the Buddhas, uh, Buddha laid out because they fetter our ability to see clearly. Yes, and on my personal profile, I write a lot of general, just, you know, chatting yeah. stuff. And you, and you work one-on-one on one with uh, different... I work one-on-one on one and also with groups mm -hmm. and also face-to-face -face over Zoom, obviously, these days. Yeah. But it works very well. And yeah. I have some people who only ever worked face-to-face. -face. They don't like to write. And so we just meet twice a week and that works well too. Not, not with the first step. They already had seen through the self-illusion. The self-illusion needs this momentum. It's really important to do it daily. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so, so, so much. It was Thank lovely you. To, to speak with you, really. I really appreciate it. I'm Thank you so, so much. I'm going to stop the recording.